really bad tan line. So yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome to our channel. We are Hannah and Johnny, also known as Finding Our Adventure. In 2020 we converted our Ford Transit to live in full time. Since then we've been on an endless adventure with our two cats, Tia and Skye, exploring, living and working in our tiny home. Join us each week for a new episode of Finding Our Adventure. Good morning everybody and welcome to another episode of Finding Our Adventure. We have just arrived in the town of Espelet, which is about 30 minutes inland from Biarritz and we found this car park where they actually have six spaces for camper vans which is really nice because if you've been watching our last few episodes you'll know over the last few weeks travelling down the Atlantic coast we found it really difficult to park so it's really cool that we found this camping van park, uh, car parking and now we're going to go explore the town. So one thing that Espelet is famous for is its chilies and just behind me here there's loads of chilies growing and in the summer months they hang up the chilies to dry in front of all of their houses and it's really really pretty so hopefully we'll go and see some chilies in the town all dried up um, but it's one of the few places where these chilies can be grown and it's this is within the Basque country so it's an autonomous community I think within the south of France and the north region of Spain and they even have their own language. I think it's like um, Champagne. Champagne can only be named Champagne after the Champagne area and sold to Champagne and I think the Espelette chili is the same so you can only grow and sell Espelette chilies if they're actually grown in Espelette. It's a EU thing. So if you know me, I love chilies and anything hot and spicy, so a whole town dedicated to chilies is pretty awesome. And also we've come up close to the Pyrenees now, so just outside of town you can start to see the mountains and everything. Yeah, it's a nice contrast from coming from the coast into the mountains and the countryside, which is really nice. Some nice fresh air. Yep. <laughs> just made it to one of the churches here in Espelette and it's a very very old church so I'm just gonna go inside now. So this is the church of Saint Etienne and it's just on the outs, well it's within Espelette but it's a little bit further out from the main centre and from the outside it looks like a fortress, it doesn't really look like a typical church but on the inside it's got typical Basque um, interior with these wooden levels that you can walk all the way up and get a really amazing view from the inside and it's very intricately decorated as well. So very very interesting to see inside the church how old is it and it's oh yeah it's from the 16th century i think is when it was built but the interior uh, i think like the altar area is from the 18th century okay so we decided to treat ourselves to some of the local products so we got some olive oil, chilli olive oil, which we are very excited to try on pizza because we love pizza. So we thought this would be the perfect accompaniment. And as Johnny mentioned earlier, he loves hot sauce, even though I don't think this is that spicy, but it's basically like a chilli sauce. Good morning, everybody. So we have just gone over the border to Spain to do some chores today. Uh, we're basically emptying the toilet and filling up our water. 
for some reason it says zero percent on the tank but it's still saying well it's not still saying it's still giving us water which is really really strange for the last couple of days we've been waiting for it to just completely cut out but it's still letting water out so yeah so we're just going to sort that all out today so they've got a dedicated area here where you can fill up your water so that's what johnny's doing here and you can also empty your toilet which is really good it's going to be really <laughs> slow <laughs> 10 years later. Not too bad. They've also got somewhere where you can uh, vacuum clean, so you can clean your van out. And this one, I'm not sure what this is. No idea. The only thing is that we're a little bit too high, so we can't actually fit underneath here, so we're parked a bit awkwardly on the side. but. So 2.4 metres and 2.8 metres and we're just under 3 metres I think, 2.9 metres? Oh, we're 3.2 metres <laughs> because we've got the roof box so yeah, but very good. She's taking forever. <laughs> Is it just letting a little trickle in? Oh, nice. It's because we were so empty. And obviously it's not there's not much pressure out of this water. Um, yeah, it's taking for a, and before anybody leaves any comments in the comments about this not being drinking water, we don't drink the water out of the tank. We just use it for washing, so it's okay to use this sort of hose. And also for the European trip that we're on, we also brought um, one of these ugh, big water containers as well just to give us a few extra days where if we do run out of water we've got this as well which has been really handy because yeah the last few days even though the tap's still been letting out water we've been able to have some showers with the water container so even though we're carrying a little bit of extra weight it's definitely worth it just a man and his toilet and his <laughs> watering can <laughs> So I don't know if we said this morning that we've just popped over the border from France to Spain because it's actually the closest place to empty the toilet and fill up water with from where we were yesterday. And the fuel here is so cheap at the moment. The, the service station we were at filling up water, that was about one euro 90. And there's a service station just over there where it's about one euro 85, which I think is about one pound 50, which is like a whole 50 pence cheaper than it is in the UK right now. So we're gonna head over there and make sure we fill up this tank. We have just found the most amazing spot to take the girls for a walk. Um, it's been a few days because we've been near towns and cities where there's not really any suitable places to take them out. So they are loving being outside and there's not a soul to be seen around here. We've got mountain views all around us and it's just very peaceful and quiet. scratch do we Whoa. good morning everybody we had an amazing night stay here. It's so peaceful. It's our first proper like um, countryside park up for the whole of the whole trip so far. So it's been really nice. Just got the mountains in the background, and Spain is just over that way over there. And that's actually where we're heading today. We're leaving France and we're heading over to Spain, and we're going to be starting our time in Spain, heading along the coast and possibly down to Portugal. Um, our original plan was that we're going to head through Spain and go down to Barcelona and catch a ferry to Mallorca. But um, when we originally planned that, the ferry prices weren't too expensive a few months ago and we didn't book anything because we weren't sure on exact dates that we were going to go and the ferry prices have like doubled or even tripled in price and the ferry itself is actually like a six hour ferry, six, seven hour ferry and um, Tia doesn't really like ferries so we thought we'll save the money and we can put it into like travelling down to Portugal and stuff and also we won't put Tia and Sky through going on such a long ferry so we've changed our plans slightly but we still have some epic plans and adventures coming so we're going to hit the road now and head into Spain 
we have just driven about three and a half hours from where we were this morning to this epic place. This is the Gorbier Nat Natural Park on the edge of the Basque Country and it's, um, it's the largest uh, natural park in the Basque Country and we're about an hour south of Bilbao and um, we looked on the maps this morning and there's supposed to be an epic waterfall that we're going to go explore probably tomorrow because we're a little bit tired now after all the driving and yeah we found this really cool park up a couple of other campus here and we can't wait to go up there and check things out okay so we took a pit stop on our journey here about halfway and we got some food and we stocked up on all of our supplies that we need for the next few days and i actually got an idea from ben and cheska from overlanding sophia when we were watching their turkey videos and that was when ben bought a big bag of oranges and so we did the same thing got a juicer this was like two euros from carrefour and we're going to juice the oranges and fill up this bottle to put in the fridge and have fresh orange juice that, that's only one half and it's oh, i wonder how many oranges in it will fill that juice because it looks quite small yeah that's um that's half an orange yeah that's crazy how many oranges have you juiced so far i'm still going look at the sink <laughs> whoa <laughs> welcome to the orange factory <laughs> but this is still cheaper like in the sh supermarkets here they've got the um the juicing machines for the oranges and I think it was like eight or nine euros for a litre, or maybe even a bit less than a litre. And this whole bag of oranges was, what, three euros fifty? So, um, much cheaper doing it this way. And it's quite fun as well. Is it a workout as well? It's it's quite warm today, yeah. <laughs> so there might be a bit of sweat in the orange juice. Oh, <laughs> and you can have it then. <laughs> so, uh, four kilograms of oranges later, and we have almost two litres of juice. So the only thing to do now is to put it in the fridge, and for breakfast tomorrow, We'll have some fresh juice, quite a lot of fresh Lovely. juice. <laughs> Good morning everybody. After a very peaceful night here in the natural park, we heard some owls last night and we watched the sheep being herded by um, some of the dogs, the farm dogs, which was pretty cool to see. Now we're off on a small hike this morning. I think it's going to take about three hours, but we are walking to the waterfall around here. I think it's called Nervion Waterfall, not sure, but, <laughs> but there are wolves that uh, are around here and there is a story about a wolf pushing in a man into a hole or something like that, so hopefully we don't see any wolves, but it's a nice cool start to the morning and I think it's going to heat up as the day goes on. And we should also say, we keep saying natural park oh, yeah. and not national park, and, it, and we are saying the right thing we think because on Google Maps it says, park. it says like, yeah nature na uh, natural park it's not actually a national park yeah they call them nature parks it's same in france i think as well so because of the um the wolves that they have in this area the sheep that they have up in the hills here they actually have like big dogs that um stay with them to scare off any wolves guard dogs yeah. the guard dogs so you've got to be careful that you don't get caught out by the guard dogs as well so avoid the sheep walk around them yeah they've and, got a sign uh, that shows you yeah what to do what with the sheep can and can't do you've got you have to walk around the sheep and because otherwise the dogs will get you We've only been walking for five 200 minutes. meters, five minutes or whatever it is. And so far we've come across skulls, hip bones, jaw bones, many fragments of different bones from the sheep. So maybe the dogs aren't doing too great a job here and the wolves are just having a field day. I am a bit worried <laughs> because I feel like I don't, I've never come across a wolf before. We're not gonna see a wolf. <laughs> might be hungry. Yeah, I mean the chances are, I mean, if we saw a wolf, that'd be pretty epic, but the chances of actually seeing a wolf are so slim. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if they just die naturally, the sheep here, and they just leave the bones, and the wolves come and get their remains, or they're actually being killed by the wolves. I think this horse is saying, do not pass. <laughs> So we've just um, attracted all the vultures. They're swooping around our heads right now. We didn't know what the noise was. And we're literally looking up. There's about four or five vultures. So, um, so if the wolves don't get us, the vultures will. <laughs> that is a vulture. Okay, I don't know how clear that was in the camera, but that vulture was like, three four meters at the most above our heads it just swooped right down 
having a real good look at us and there's two of them just over there now. They're really watching us and seeing what we're doing. So uh, this is really cool, but it's a bit, it feels really strange because in the UK- We won't be getting our snacks out here. Yeah, in, in, <laughs> in the UK, the birds stay well away from you, but the ones here, they're coming very close and they're massive, huge birds. Just a quick um, vulture update. There's about six or seven vultures flying over our heads right now. And we just had a guy in Spanish telling us something and um, we didn't understand the word that he was saying and we said we were English and he was like, ah, and then walked off. So I don't know, he had two big dogs with him as well. So he could be telling us to watch out for the vultures because they might be getting hungry or um, who knows? He could have been saying, have a nice day for all we know. But um, we're gonna carry on. We're on the flat bit now, we're on the plateau. And then I don't think it's too far until we hit the uh, where the waterfall should be, but it might be dry now because it's been very hot recently. So we're gonna go try find it. So as it's summer, the river is completely dried up and there is no waterfall, unfortunately. But you can see where it is, it's just behind us, just here. And there's like a little dip in the rocks and you can actually walk across it because the riverbed's completely dry and there's a platform over there but we're not going to walk all the way around there today but we can admire it from here so we've just stopped out at a um, petrol station and we found a car wash well a van wash for our van which is really good because our van is so dirty and it's covered in all sorts of like sea salt grime and all sorts so we're gonna get cleaning that now and it's pretty hot so it's gonna be nice to have a bit of a spray from the water <laughs> Good evening everybody. We have had another three hour drive today from where we were this morning and we have arrived in a town called Yanez. It's actually spelled lanes with two L's. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, I mean, we've had an epic drive today. We've gone from like where we were this morning, which was quite moody and misty um, mm -hmm. through like really dry areas. And then we've come to this area of the coast, um, which is really green and it's got vast mountain areas and it's jungles beautiful. and it's incredibly beautiful. Mm -hmm. But we're actually heading into the town now because we're gonna go um, find some dinner we think and they've got a couple of beaches along here so we're probably gonna explore this part of the coast for the next few days yeah and just um see what it's all about and we're in a great little they've got a free air here yeah which has uh, well cold showers but it's all completely free so yeah. i made the most of it washed my hair and uh yeah nice little park up so thumbs up for airs in spain so far yeah and free like hannah said so it's really cool so there's locked all the van up parked it next to all the other vans so we're pretty sure it's safe and we can just walk into town from here if you watched our last episode, we mentioned that we thought we had a problem with the van, like a dead spot on the accelerator. But um, we did some research yesterday when we were driving, because it's still happening. And we, um, before we left for France from England, we had an issue with uh, the boost pipe um, uh, tube. And it was like split basically, so we were losing um, turbo power then. And we think actually, it's a normal thing. We think it's just a turbo lag basically. But it's really weird because we've never experienced it before so we think actually the work on the turbo has actually i don't know made the turbo more efficient now which we're actually experiencing what we should have experienced before um but we're going to phone our mechanic tomorrow morning when they're open in the uk and just ask because it's um yeah as i said it's a really really weird feeling so um yeah but fingers crossed it's it's actually nothing to worry about So if you are in Asturias, which is the in the northern part of Spain, there's so many beautiful little towns and villages that we are yet to visit. We've got a few more hopefully that we can squeeze in before we he head to Portugal. But this one has a really nice feel to it. It's very kind of like medieval uh, with all the, there's like these beautiful flags that are hanging from the kind of high up in the streets and it's all like cobbled 
and it just has a really nice feel to it. We just went past and they had like this party going on with very kind of like medieval music and Johnny said it made him feel like he was in Lord of the Rings. Because it had all the fireworks <laughs> going off as well. Yeah, and there's like there's been these really loud fireworks going off every 10 minutes or so. So, And I can't keep my eyes open, it keeps making me jump. <laughs> but yeah, it's a very nice town on the coast. Some really cool looking buildings as well. So we have found somewhere for dinner and we've actually come to a pizzeria. We were looking for a paella restaurant but we looked at about 50 different restaurants and we couldn't find one that we liked or could get into and we came across the pizzeria and we were hungry enough that we just jumped in and we've both got pizzas now. So we're going to tuck in and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning everybody. So this morning we're off to a garage because we just want to go and get the van fully checked out for this issue that seems to not be going away. Uh, it seems to be okay this morning, Johnny says, but I think when we're driving over longer distances and over hills and things, it seems to be more uh, persistent. So we're just going to this garage, which has got some really good reviews and a lot of people who have, ha who have got camper vans and motorhomes have been here and said it's been great. So we're hoping that this guy can help us and help to ease our worries about the van because we don't want to just keep driving on it and maybe causing a bigger issue so yeah that is the plan this morning and we'll keep you updated so update on the van we took it to the garage and the guy plugged it in and said that there wasn't any issues that he could find so he's told us to take the van for a drive just to get the engine hot and hopefully it will show the issue that we are experiencing because currently he can't seem to find an issue so I did say to him though um, using Google Translate <laughs> that um, it the van seems fine whenever we first start driving it in the morning it's only after 30 minutes of driving or so that it starts to happen so he was like yeah go go take it for a drive get it get the engine nice and warm and stuff and we're go I'm gonna drive until we start having that issue and then he can plug it in again and hopefully then he can find the issue if not I'm gonna tell him to go drive it and <laughs> and the poor cats are in the cat carriers now and they're getting a bit like oh let us out so so he seems yeah. like a really good guy though hopefully if he finds it he'll fix it okay van update we have finished at the mechanics after taking the van for about a 30 minute drive because on the last few days when we've been driving it's been about 30 30 minutes or so before we started feeling the issues and um, before we went on the drive he plugged it into his diagnostics machine and um, he said there was no issues that he could find and so um, what, he, what we did was we went for the 30 minute drive and we got back and um, I didn't really feel the problem when we were driving so I was a little bit annoyed because I was like oh now we're not feeling the issue when I want it to be having the issue so we could show the mechanic and then we got back I asked him a few more questions and stuff and then he, we were using Google Translate the whole time and then he said on his Google Translate how was, how was it when it was driving and I said it was okay and he said it's because there was an error code on the diagnostic machine that he cleared and he said it should have made it run smoother and the van is running smoother now so he said to stay in the area for the next day or so to give it a good run around and if there's anything that comes up then we can go in tomorrow morning and talk to him again but um, I said to Hannah we're going to go for a drive and find somewhere for lunch and then Hannah chose basically a, a really steep mountain road to come up so what a place to to test if the van's working and it's you know yesterday would have been pretty sketchy driving up with the lack of power in the van but today we've managed to get up to here and look at this epic place so fingers crossed the van is all sorted and we're able to get out exploring again okay because we're parked on the side of the road there i'm just taking the one wheel out probably the most the coolest place i've ever got ever got a one wheel but um just taking the one wheel down this road um, because we think there might be some parking over there and that means we could spend a day here and potentially even stay the night here um, I think we just need a day just to chill because um, the stress of the last couple of days with the van has uh, yeah, just stressed us out a little bit but with it looking like it's all fixed now we're just going to have a possibly a chill day here and, um, and yeah just um, explore this area I'm okay. <laughs> the, uh, I was just going a bit too fast on the one wheel and then the, um, the motor tried to slow me down on the hill so it threw me off. But I caught it so um, I'm okay. So I'll just go a little bit slower and there's a, a cow ahead. So I don't want to go too fast past her because I might scare her. I think why the board threw me off then was because um, I was probably going a bit too fast down that hill and I just overloaded the braking system. So, uh, I mean, you don't know until you do it, and I guess that's how you learn. Just giving um, 
the girls a little walk out here in the mountains and I've uh, just put Tia back in the van, she's had her walk and um, doing them one at a time because there's a lot of cows around here and a lot of new um, sensors and stuff for them so it's good just seeing them one at a time, getting used to it rather than having to worry about both of them. Yeah, so Tia's back in the van now of Hannah having some treats and Skye is sniffing a big pile of cow poop and there's lots of flies in it so she's very curious of that. And we've also put their tractive trackers on so we're setting those back up and keeping them on the harnesses so if anything does happen we can keep an eye on them where they go and uh, make sure they're all safe. We've just driven down the mountain and on the main road looking for our parker for tonight we've just come across this really cool suspension bridge over the river and there's loads of like kayakers just going past right now this is epic what a find i mean um it looks pretty sketchy and pretty old it says maximum of five people and it's very wobbly but it's um it's really good fun and it's such a cool view of the mountains and the valley and the river we've just made it down to our parker for the night on the river and we're just going to go check out the river now and hannah i think might even go for a swim depending on how deep it is. So yeah, we're just gonna explore. It's really nice and sandy around here actually, so we have to be careful that we don't get the, the van stuck in the sand. And then it's actually a salmon river as well. So apparently um, lots of fishermen come out in the evenings and all those um, canoe companies earlier, they've all kind of finished now and left. And uh, yeah, it's just such a cool place. It's so peaceful here with the mountains in the background, just over there. And uh, yeah, just really, really cool here. There's loads of salmon in the river. They're right up to the edge of the water. It's crazy. I've got a really bad tan line. So yeah, <laughs> into the river. And this river flows all the way to Ribuidela, I think, which is where we were planning to go today. But we had a bit of a detour because we tested the van out in the mountains. Hello. They would like the fishes, wouldn't they? <laughs> We've just brought Tia and Skye out for another walk today, just before sunset, and they've um, they've really been enjoying their walks recently. They've been seeing so many like different landscapes and different areas. They're in the mountains this morning for their walk, and now for their evening walk, they're by the river with the fish, and they're just living their best lives. They're really enjoying it, and um, yeah, just it's really nice out here at the moment. Um, Hannah and Skye are just down there, and it's super peaceful. So I think we're going to make the most of this, and uh, yeah. I think we're going to leave this episode here, so thank you so much for watching and supporting us as always, and we'll see you guys next week for another Spanish adventure. See you then.